toward unity, 820. Christ bestowed unity on his church from the beginning. This unity, we believe, subsists in the Catholic Church as something she can never lose, and we hope that it will continue to increase until the end of time. Christ always gives his church the gift of unity, but the church must always pray and work to maintain, reinforce, and perfect the unity that Christ wills for her. This is why Jesus himself prayed at the hour of his passion and does not cease praying to his Father for the unity of his disciples, that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. May they also be one in us, so that the world may know that you have sent me. The desire to recover the unity of all Christians is a gift of Christ and a call of the Holy Spirit. 821. Certain things are required in order to respond adequately to this call. A permanent renewal of the Church in greater fidelity to her vocation. Such renewal is the driving force of the movement toward unity. Conversion of heart as the faithful try to live holier lives according to the Gospel. For it is the unfaithfulness of the members to Christ's gift which causes divisions. Prayer in common. Because change of heart and holiness of life, along with public and private prayer for the unity of Christians, should be regarded as the soul of the whole ecumenical movement and merits the name spiritual ecumenism. Fraternal knowledge of each other. Ecumenical formation of the faithful and especially of priests. Dialogue among theologians and meetings among Christians of the different churches and communities, collaboration among Christians in various areas of service to mankind. Human service is the idiomatic phrase.